What is going on everybody? So the first EA Major is in the books and I just kind of wanted to go over a cool little sequence of plays I thought um, was pretty neat to look at from this Joke vs. Tweez game. Um, I think it was the first game of the tournament actually. But uh, Tweez ended up pulling out the win 20-14 to 14, I believe the final score was. And there's a few plays that led up to the final play that Tweez actually ended up sealing the game on. It was a third down conversion he had that I thought uh, were good like plays to look at leading up to that final play kind of understanding the adjustments that joke made defensively and why he did what he did on defense on that final play and then kind of uh, how Tweez countered that so looking at this first play right here three minutes left in the second quarter a little more than three minutes Tweez up by seven single back spread that's another cool thing I love watching Tweez play because he actually runs the single back spread offense out of the West Coast playbook which is very unique it's nice and refreshing and no offense to all the gun bunch guys out there but it's kind of getting a little tiresome watching gun bunch you know for the second year in a row um, pretty much everybody's running it once again I won't say everybody but the majority of people are running it once again after last year which was basically the gun bunch show as well but anyway I digress so right here second and 12 and what you're gonna see joke actually came out running a lot of 3-4 right here is in 3-3-5 a nickel 3-3-5 and he ran cover 3 a lot early on and then kinda shifted to cover 2 after Tweez actually hit him up top on a cover 3 and joke baseline impressed and didn't pull out uh, this right guy out here um, it was actually Robert Alford and Paul Richardson hit him up top for a like a 70 yard touchdown so then after that joke sh shifted to more cover 2 and so what you're gonna see right here Tweez identifies this, and if you're running cover two against a spread formation when you have receivers like Doug Baldwin, Paul Richardson out there in the wide splits, a popular tactic to beat, you know, cover two is basically to go ahead and fit the ball into this pocket out here that forms right about right there between this cloud flat or soft squad or hard flat, whatever flat zone that cornerback ends up being in, and the deep safety on that side of the field. You can kind of fit in with a sideline pass lead bullet and, and that's exactly what you're gonna see right here common way to beat cover two and Tweez identifies it midway through the second quarter and it's something that jokes gonna have to keep in mind so you see Baldwin gets off the press the corner sinks back sinks back but he's too far underneath and then the safety is actually a little too deep right here to make a play on it if joke were using the Seahawks and that were Earl Thomas he'd probably be able to make a play on it which is why I think you should definitely use the Seahawks and regs personally um, but joking with the Falcons here Falcon safety not gonna be able to get over there in time and you're gonna see Tweez deliver a nice bullet pass right in that area right there so bam Baldwin actually holds on to it so it's a good catch by Baldwin tight window but it is a common way to beat cover two so that's something jokes gonna have to take into account moving forward if he wants to keep running this cover two style defense down the road against that single back spread offense from Tweez. So now moving on a little later in the game right here, uh, second and 15, Tweez now up by 10. And what you're going to see uh, right here, post snap, Joke actually mixes it up, goes with a little pressure, sends five, playing very aggressively with his user Campbell uh, over the short middle of the field. And that's something uh, that if you watch the game, Joke was doing a lot of. And that's something I think Tweez is going to take into account later on in the game that I'll point out and talk about. Uh, but what he does right here, Tweez, is that he actually ends up hitting Tyler Lockett right here quick in the seam about in that area. And it was kind of a perfect storm, right? So Joke Blitz 5 played 1 over the middle with his user very aggressively. And it looks like he actually went back to a 3-deep shell here. So you got deep safety, corner on the right side, and corner on the left side. And then it looks like he had uh, basically two outside zones, probably cloud flats or seam flats or curl flats whatever they were uh, basically they were sideline zones and he was using uh, basically the entire short to intermediate middle part of the field he was delegating that to his user defender Campbell and so it's kind of the perfect storm for Tyler Lockett here running this seam route because of the fact okay Lockett's running this seam and the two defenders who were actually around Lockett which is the safety and this guy right here were actually drifting away from him. The safety was getting pulled to the deep middle of the field because of that middle third assignment. And this guy out here was actually getting pulled to the sideline because of his zone assignment. So they're actually both bracketing Lockett. So it doesn't look like Lockett has much room, but because they're both drifting away, it's actually a perfect storm for Lockett to get open. Tweez identifies it quickly. Bam, quick throw to Tyler Lockett, picks up 13 and puts him in a nice 
third and super short, third and manageable. So that's something Tweez is actually, or Joke rather, is going to have to take into account now moving forward is that Tweez has the ability to hit those quick, you know, quick hike seam throws to basically either side, whether it's Tyler Lockett or I think he has yeah Tanner McAvoy in the right slot, whichever one he he elects to go to. You have to take that into account. That's something that the single back spread formation brings. Uh, you can get the ball out very quickly because it's single back. You don't have to wait for a shotgun snap. And you have both receivers, you know, basically two slot receivers on either side, symmetrical formation. So if you have to play it to one side, you have to worry about it coming from the other side as well. So moving on to the final play of the game right here. Well, second and 12, it's going to be this third and four. So Tweez up six. Joke with one timeout. So if Tweez converts here, uh, he ends up winning the game. So single back spread, Joke goes back to 3-4. And what you're going to see post-snap, I actually love Joke's adjustments on this play, even though it ends up not working out for him ultimately. But what he does, he goes with the cover two, and he blitzes three. So he rushes three, one, two, three, and he spies his left outside linebacker, right of screen linebacker. And he does that because, well, obviously, Tweez is using Seattle with Russell Wilson, and Tweez had actually been running the ball uh, with Russell Wilson pretty much all game on joke and was had been pretty effective with it. He actually fumbled one time and recovered, so that was pretty fortunate. But he had been pretty effective running with the quarterback. So I like the QB spy. And then uh, Joke actually makes two other interesting adjustments. He mans up a linebacker on Tyler Lockett, so I think that could be going back uh, to the quick hitting seam route. He doesn't want to get busted over the middle on cover two uh, with that seam route to Tyler Lockett, so I like that adjustment. And then he mans up another linebacker on the far right receiver in Paul Richardson. Now, that's an interesting man up. Maybe he was just trying to confuse him. Maybe he had a specific route that he was expecting in mind. I'm not sure exactly 100% why he did that, but uh, for the sake of argument, Maybe he was just trying to kind of confuse Tweez and throw something at him that he hadn't shown before on this third and four. So basically what that leaves is Joke in this cover two shell. So you have two deep safeties. You've got cloud flats on the outside. And then he's using over the middle, once again, Campbell playing very aggressively, essentially leaving the entire middle of the field to himself. You know, everybody else is branching out, whether they're getting manned up or it's cloud flats. So once again, Joke, very confident in his user defender delegating the entire middle of the field to himself. Now, Tweez comes back with a great route combo. And the reason this works, I think, is in largely due to the part of, or due to the fact that Joke had to go with cloud flats on the outside, which my theory behind why Joke went with cloud flats on third and four and not hard flats is because he wanted to basically muddy up this read on the outside in the case that Tweez wanted to go with the outside fade once again. If you put a hard flat out there, you can essentially just snap throw it. At least if there's a cloud flat, it kind of muddies up the throw. It's something, you know, you're not super confident in. Sometimes they can drop it. Sometimes a bad throw can end up with an interception. Sometimes your corner can jump it. So it just muddies up the throw just a little bit that can leave Tweez a little uneasy trying to throw that route. So I think that would be why, in my opinion, he went with those cloud flats. Um, only Joke would know that. Uh, but that's my theory, and what that does is basically because Joke went with those cloud flats on the outside and he was playing so aggressively, Tweez went with underneath route right there, another backside underneath route right there, and then so he basically cleared out with Tyler Lockett, and then he's going to have this deep crossing route coming over the middle, and what this does is it essentially locks Joke's user into place right here. Campbell, he's forced, he's literally forced to stay on that drag because he does not have anybody to pass the drag off to because of the fact that he doesn't have a hard flat out there. Since it's a cloud flat, this guy sink, has sank back so far already. If Campbell peels off the drag and curls back to, you know, one of the crossing routes, whether it's, you know, he reads the, edic, the X route or the backside B route, whatever it may be, he can't pull off. If he pulls off, Tweez hits uh, the drag to McAvoy, possession catches it, he's already passed the first down game's over. So Joke has now locked himself into covering this drag route because of the fact there's no hard flat on that left side. So because of that, his only chance here really is to pray for a block shed. And on a three-man rush, it doesn't happen. Twee stays composed in the pocket. And as you see right there, the X receiver, Doug Baldwin, breaks wide open over the middle of the field. Twee's with the possession catch to seal the game. So I thought that was really interesting. Just a little three-play sequence. I thought you could kind of connect some dots with and 
you know, have a method behind Joke's adjustments. I, I liked his adjustments. It looked like he kind of went with, you know, not giving Tweez anything easy, playing very aggressively over the middle with his user defender, along with the fact he didn't want to give up that immediate hike throw to either the seam or to the outside fade, uh, both with that cloud flat on the outside along with manning up the inside Tyler Lockett receiver. So I like Joke's strategy there. Tweez just with a perfect play call in that scenario, and, you know, you can't do anything but – you know, take your hat off to him. He made the great play when he needed the most, and he sealed the game. I mean, obviously a game between two great competitors, and you'll be seeing a lot more of them, them I'm sure, as the year goes on. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely let me know what you guys thought of this game. And until next time, guys, take it easy.